Good morning. Glad you're with us. Uh, I'd like to just bring a couple of announcements to your attention. First, I'd like to remind the session that we have our uh, monthly meeting tomorrow, 6.30 in Fellowship Hall. So see you all session members tomorrow, 6.30, Fellowship Hall. Uh, public service announcement for Cherokee High School. This coming weekend, April 19th, April 20th at 7 p.m. and April 21st at 3 p.m., uh, the musical Lucky Stiff will be performed with Aubrey Fleener uh, is in the musical. So uh, please stop by and see that. Lucky Stiff, um, I have not seen it, but I believe it is uh, kind of like, for those of you who are my age, Weekend at Bernie's when there's a dead body walking around kind of thing, kind of thing. We're, talk, we're going to talk about dead bodies in the sermon, so uh, there you go. But that's, uh, that's this weekend at Cherokee High School. Aubrey is in it, so uh, I'm sure it will be wonderful. I will be there. Hopefully, we will see you there, too. Uh, friends, I invite you to look at the other announcements in the bulletin. Uh, but now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to join me in our call to worship, which is in your bulletin or on your screen. When the disciples were certain that Jesus was dead, he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Let us watch for the risen Christ this day, bursting in with new life and hope. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, you keep showing up for us in unexpected places. When we face uncertainty, you are there. When we worry about our tomorrows, you are there. Even in the doubt-filled, lonely hours, you are there. Hear our prayer of thanks for your constant love, which convinces us to sing aloud. Blessed assurance, Jesus in mind. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For those of you who are able, I invite you to stand as we all sing hymn number 268.
The one who calls us to repent hears us and trust that our creator knows us through and through. Let us open our hearts to the healing of God's forgiveness by confessing our sins this morning. Friends, first we will pray together the prayer of confession in our bulletin, followed by silent prayer. Let us pray together. God of all hope and joy, we confess that we continue to live in fear. You sent the Lord of life among us, yet we give him up to die. You raised him from the dead, yet we still do not believe. Forgive us, God of grace. Help us to receive with gratitude the great gift of love you offer and live as your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who offered his life and love to save the world from sin. Friends, this morning, hear and believe in the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Got a full pew. Morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Excellent. It's good to see everybody. I'm glad you're here today. Um, You know, sometimes you get news that you get so excited that you just tell people, right? You got to be careful, though, because sometimes maybe somebody told you something you weren't supposed to tell somebody. I remember one time when when I was young, my mom showed me what she got my dad for Christmas. I was so excited that when Dad got home, I took him back there and I showed him what it was. I wasn't supposed to do that. But sometimes news is so good, you got to tell people. Jesus tells us in the Bible to be witnesses. Anybody know what a witness is? It's not just about a song. Can I get a witness? Never mind. It's it's old. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A witness is someone who tells what they have seen. So when you see something, then if it's good, you go tell somebody. And that's what a witness is. And that's what Jesus tells us to do. What if I was like walking through the woods and I saw this, oh, this beautiful thing. What if it it was like the fountain of youth and it made you young again? Huh? What if I didn't tell anybody about that? I'd be the only one young, right? I can't do that. You're right, Sophia. You're right. I got to tell people. So I'd have to tell people so everybody could come use it and everybody would be that way. That's right. That's what being a witness is, telling people about things you see and hear. So when here you hear about God, right? So then you go out and then you tell people about God. Now, I know some of you don't have any problem talking to other people, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Right, right. So that's what you do. When you, what you hear and hear about God and what you see, how friendly people are, then you go out into the world and you tell people what you've seen about God and how much God loves them. That's what being a witness is all about. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for today, for loving us in every way. Help us to love and not to fuss. Because we know you love us. Amen. Thank you.
Friends, before we hear God's word, let's pray. Holy God, by your spirit, reveal your radical, surprising love. Come to us through your holy word and let us hear what you are saying today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture today is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that it has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament uh, scripture today is uh, Luke chapter 24. I'll be reading verses um, 36 through 48. Friends, I invite you to hear God's word as it comes to you today. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name and to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a uh, cemetery on the uh, campus of Clemson University. As a matter of fact, it's right uh, behind the uh, football stadium. You got to kind of be somebody to be to be buried in there. Um, I heard yesterday. Unfortunately, there was a uh, two seater Cessna airplane that crashed into the uh, cemetery late yesterday evening. They were able to uh, find two people that were that were still alive. Uh, but um, as uh, they dug more and more, they've recovered at least 50 bodies, and they think that that number will go up over the night as the digging continues in the cemetery. So. See, they're dead bodies, <laughs> Janet, and they're digging up dead bodies. They don't know the difference in live and dead bodies. And, uh, and evidently, people don't know the difference in a good joke and a bad joke. <laughs> Maybe they know the difference, George, and it was just a bad joke. You didn't get it? Well, you're old. That's nothing new there. See, George, there were two people in the plane. They were, they were alive. It's a short sermon. I'm just trying to kill time right now. I'll keep going. There's a difference between a living person and a dead person. And that's uh, what Luke wants you to know in the scripture that he has given us today. Now, this is uh, the, the last chapter of Luke, and this is the third or fourth appearance story of Jesus after his resurrection. Uh, he had appeared to Mary, some say, then he appeared to Peter, as we found out, and Jesus appeared to uh, the two walking on the road to uh, Emmaus. And now, in this story, Jesus appears again. At the end of this scripture, uh, we are told that Jesus says, you are witnesses. In other words, go and tell what you've seen. What you've seen is what has happened. The scripture has been fulfilled. That the Messiah must suffer and die. But on the third day, he must rise again. Now, uh, last week's sermon was about commissioning and go out into the world and, and telling all that. So there's no sense in uh, repeating that. I want to concentrate on the first part of this. Luke goes to great detail to let us know what Jesus was like when he was resurrected. Jesus was not a ghost. Actually, at this time, it is more common than it is today, but, but there was a belief on, 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 on the dead uh, coming back. They weren't quite alive, but they weren't quite dead. So uh, there was this belief in ghosts coming back. And that's what some people probably thought when Jesus was resurrected, that he was this ghostly figure walking around. Luke wants you to know, and he goes to great detail in this, to let you know that this was not a ghost. Ghosts do not have flesh and blood. Ghosts do not have wounds on their hands and wounds on their feet. You cannot touch a ghost. Jesus says in this, touch my hands, touch my feet. See the places, see the marks where they hung me on the cross. It's me. I'm not a ghost. I'm here. A ghost would never offer to see their hands and their feet because if you watch enough Scooby-Doo movies to know, usually they don't have hands and feet. And then in the middle of all that, Jesus basically asked the question, what's for dinner? What do you have to eat? Not only did he ask the question, it tells us that they gave him some broiled fish and he ate. You know why? Ghosts don't eat. Ghosts don't eat. This is not a ghost. This is Jesus Christ resurrected bodily right there in front of them. It is him. It is the one with the marks on his hands, the marks on his feet. It is Jesus. <coughs> He's the same Jesus, although a little bit different. It's not a spirit. It's not some ghost. It's Jesus. 
There's an old uh, 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 teaching that's often incorrect. And it goes all the way back to this time about the immortality of the soul, that when, when we die, our soul doesn't die. It just goes to heaven. That is incorrect. When we die, we die. We die body and soul. All of us dies. And then when we are resurrected, we're not resurrected with our soul. We're resurrected with our body and soul. We're resurrected all the way. And that's what this scripture says, is that when we're resurrected, we are new people like Jesus is new. We die, we die. But when we are raised, we are raised. And that's what this scripture is trying to tell us. This is what you are witness to. This is what you are going out and witness to. That God has defeated death. That the worst fear you can have, God has defeated it. Because this Jesus who was dead is alive. And because he lives we too will live. This is the same Jesus who was hung on the cross and who was killed this way. It has to be this same person because that's the fulfillment of Scripture. That is God's plan and God's purpose from the beginning. For the salvation of humankind is for Jesus to suffer and die on the cross and be resurrected. It's the same person. If it's not, then this Jesus didn't bear the cross and if Jesus didn't bear the cross then our salvation has not been assured for us it is the same the same Jesus that lived we can't take Easter and separate it from Good Friday we have to go through Good Friday to get to Easter and that's what this story is all about is the resurrected Jesus is the one who suffered and died for us but who through God's power is now standing right there in front of the disciples. Were they mystified? Were they scared? Yes. If you can't trust the dead to stay dead, who can you trust? Right? But through God, nothing is impossible. Through the resurrection, there are possibilities beyond the probable. And that's the good news we have today, friends. Is the one who was resurrected, the one who bore his life on the cross, the one who died for us, lives for us now. And guess what? We're promised the same thing. That we too will be resurrected, not as some mystified soul floating through the air, bouncing off of cloud to cloud to cloud, but body and soul. The same yet different. Same that you are who you are. Different in that anything that was ailing you before no longer ails you. Resurrection brings new life. That's what Luke is telling us. That Jesus was resurrected bodily. He was there. So that gives us hope that even in the darkest of hours, we can think back and think the horrible thing that Jesus went through. He came through that and now is standing there with the disciples. And God promises the same thing for us. And it was only after that, only after they have seen and witnessed the resurrected Jesus, the same one with the cross, with the, the nails on his hands and with his feet, the same one, when they see that, they witness to that, and then they believe. Then after that, Jesus said, he opened the scriptures up to them. Once you believe and you know that Christ is resurrected and God has power even over the dead, once you believe that, then you can start to tell that to the world. <clears throat> and that's what they did. They witnessed to the world. They told the world the good news that Christ is back. That not even death could keep Christ in the grave. He wasn't a ghost. He was our Savior. He is our Savior. We might not see him in bodily form, but he's here. He is with us. 
and will always, always be with us. And once we believe that, then we can witness to that. The sermon is kind of the prequel. You know how they always have a, a movie that tells you the beginning of the movie you just watched? That's kind of what this sermon is. To tell you why we go out and do what we do. We do because we believe. We believe in the power and love of God. That nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Heaven and earth are connected. It's not like it's two different realms. It's not the bad life we live here and then, oh, we leave a good life up in heaven. We are to do good here. And God is here with us. So go out and be a witness to the resurrected body of Christ. The gift of the world. The gift that not even death itself can stop from happening. That's good news, people. That's good news that does not need to stay in this church. It needs to be screamed. Well, maybe not screamed like the guy was screaming downtown the other day. But, hey, if it works, it works. It needs to be told. So go out into the world and tell of the good news. That God's love has even defeated death. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. See, George, they were dead, and they were digging up the grave. Did you get that part? He was asleep. That's why I need to turn around and talk to them more often, because, you know, they can sleep. I, I see when y'all are sleeping. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I ain't stupid. But they can sleep and get away with it. Friends, let me quit rambling. Let us uh, all stand and, um, where are we? Let's sing. Let's sing. Christ is risen. Let's shout Hosanna. Hymn 248. Let's stand up able and sing. Friends, let us remain standing and I'll affirm we believe. Please join me in our affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us turn our hearts and minds in prayer to God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, it is right in what we need to do. We need to come to you in prayer. Oh God, we lift up what's on our hearts. We lift up the things that worry us. We lift up the things that we celebrate. And in it all, oh God, we're confident when we say, hear our prayers. Because we know you hear. So this morning we boldly say, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for your world, O God, the world that you created to live in peace and harmony. Yet it seems as if every day, O God, there are new wars that are happening. There are acts of terror. There are acts of violence. There are acts of of hatred. Speed the day, O God, when all that will end. Give peace to your earth. Bring harmony to your people, O God, and let us revel in the love that you send us. Let us put behind us the hate and the differences that separate us. We lift up those who are in need of your healing hand, those who are suffering, those who are sick, those who are in the hospital, those who are at home and will never leave. God, in their darkest of hours, shine your light the brightest. Bring some relief into their lives and to their family lives. Let them feel your comfort. Let them feel your love. Be with all of us, O God, who feel from day to day we are not worthy or worth what we should be. Because there's no way we can live up to the expectations that are placed upon us. But your expectation says, you're my beloved child. I call you by name, and with you I will walk through the fire. God, if you're willing to do that, we must be somebody. So help us to feel your love. Help us to feel worthy. Help us to feel that we matter. We not only ask of you today, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this church, for these people. We thank you for friends, for family. We thank you that in our dark times, you are there carrying us through. We thank you for laughter, even for the gift of tears. We thank you that the rain will end and the sun will come and what is planted will grow. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ who lived for us, who died for us, and who through your power was raised and now reigns in heaven for us. For that gift, O God, we are forever grateful. And it is in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ we pray this morning. Now hear us all pray the prayer he taught by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus gave himself fully for us, and then appeared to the disciples, bringing peace. So now let us bring wholeness and healing to others through our tithes and offerings.
Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving found in your bulletins or coming on your screen. Let us pray. We bring, we bring these, these gifts, gifts to you in response to the good news of salvation. We pray that you bless these humble offerings and use them for your purposes. May you be glorified in our giving as we have been blessed in the receiving of gifts. Amen. Friends, let us remain standing and sing our concluding hymn number 450. Friends, we have witnessed a love, a love for us that is so powerful that it has defeated death. A love for us that does not need to stay bottled up in this church, but needs to be spread from mountaintop to mountaintop, from valley to valley, from coast to coast. Go out into the world and tell of the good news of God's love for us all. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and for all the days to come. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.